So, uh, hello everybody. Thank you all for coming. Uh, my name is Ludek. I'm from Red Hat. I'm based in uh, Brno, Czech Republic. And uh, I'm basically here to tell you something about my job. I'm the enterprise content librarian at Red Hat. Uh, I will tell you something about my uh, strategy for our content. And uh, I'm uh, the owner of, uh, of a small library of uh, internal product information. The, this library is built on, a on our fresco. And uh, I want to show you how uh, we keep content in that library up to date and uh, how we use Alfresco for this purpose. Uh, maybe you are asking yourselves uh, what uh, actually a content li librarian means, what he does. So I'm basically uh, an Alfresco administrator who curates content, uh, updates its uh, content model and uh, provides sort of full-time support to the users of uh, our library. Uh, now let me tell you an anecdote. Uh, before we started our project, uh, there were basically two sources where, where sales documents uh, were stored at Red Hat. Uh, we had uh, uh, a wiki page and we had a doc space which was built on Jive. That doc space still exists, by the way. And uh, the problem with those two sources was that uh, they were self-organized, which basically means that uh, they were a mess with uh, an incredible amount of obsolete content and uh, a completely illogical a folder structure. Uh, and we had, uh, and we still have a mailing list where all 7,000 Red Hat employees are subscribed to, including our CEO. And uh, the most efficient way to find the latest information about a product was simply to <laughs> write a letter to that mailing list. And it worked perfectly. In an hour, you had your document. But imagine that a waste of time because virtually all 7,000 employees had to stop what they were doing and read your email just because you were looking for a document. So uh, this was the reason uh, we created, uh, why we created uh, the product and technologies portal five years ago. And uh, it uh, is supposed to be a library of uh, internal product information, uh, it should be the ultimate place to find all sales materials for Red Hat products. Uh, these are our challenges and the issues we have been facing since the beginning. Uh, first of all, uh, I think we are a very specific use case. We are not dealing with uh, millions of uh, documents. We are dealing just with a uh, few thousand documents. Uh, these documents are also very specific uh, because uh, they are like uh, quickly changing. Uh, new versions and translations are coming in every day. And uh, yes, and our author list, I mean the people who are uh, using our, our library actively, I mean people who are uploading content there are changing too because uh, our comp company is growing. New people are coming in. Other people are like leaving for other assignments uh, within the company or outside the company. And uh, I would say the main issue is that uh, uh, our users also need to trust the content we have uh, because uh, the, in the internal product information is uh, used by salespeople, and uh, uh, that information needs to be 100% correct. If it is not correct, uh, any error can be very costly. Today, our library has about uh, 4,200 uh, pieces of content 
we have about uh, 130 people with write access. And based on our uh, uh, internal survey, we are the primary source for about 60% uh, of our sales worldwide. Uh, we are still using Alfresco 3.4 enterprise version. We started with the, with the community version and our plan is to move to 4.2 soon. Uh, <coughs> we decided not to use Alfresco share because it's a little bit crappy in a 3.4 version and uh, we implemented our own us user interface uh, it has uh, a very basic administration toolbar. You can see here, for example, uh, the add content button. So people basically can deal with Alfresco with, uh, without uh, need to switch to the ugly Alfresco Explorer. They can basically upload content, update content, edit all metadata properties uh, directly from the, from the front end. So uh, now the question is why, why uh, we are successful because you, uh, you, uh, you should understand that uh, we are still in a competition with other uh, document management systems we, we have at Red Hat. As I've already said, we have that Jive, which is also used for mainly for collaboration on documents. Uh, we have other tools such as Customer Portal and, and so on. But as I uh, as I've said, 60% of sales are using our portal. Well, uh, we have uh, mm, I would say ni a nice, good-looking uh, user interface with the administration toolbar, where it is possible to filter and sort content very quickly. We have a good DMS. We we really like Alfresco it, because it is stable. It easy to customize. And uh, as our companies grow in uh, and new products are coming, we can easily update our taxonom taxonomy, write our own workflows uh, without any fear of instability of our data. But I would say that the main reason uh, why we are so successful is that uh, our content is our uh, priority. So how do we do this? Uh, when I started, uh, first of all, I had to find uh, accountable people for all content we had. Uh, it was uh, a <laughs> really painful process uh, because of uh, several reasons. Uh, there was a lot of, uh, you know, convincing, a lot of uh, overseas flights because uh, most of our users are uh, based uh, in. Uh, in the US. <coughs> and so on. As I've already said, our author list is unstable. New people are coming, other people are leaving. But the most important issue is that uh, people who are using our portal, who are uploading content to the portal, are not necessarily the owners of that content. Uh, they were just asked to upload it, and then they leave it. And they do not care anymore. So uh, we mm, like uh, uh, decided that uh, individual ownership is not interesting for us. We divided our reposit repository into large sections on of information corresponding to Red Hat product families. For example, we have uh, one section which is called uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And each of these sections we placed an, an administrator. Uh, it means someone who takes care so that uh, his pages look good and are up to date. Uh, let me show you now uh, how our ownership is uh, organized. At the top of our hierarchy, there, uh, there is the content librarian. I am the owner of the whole library. I am responsible for the whole structure and the metadata model. On the bottom, uh, we have those editors which, uh, who are uh, regular people with write access, but the key is the middle. 
there we have those administrators who are responsible for large sections of information. They are supposed to be in everyday contact with the uploaders to their sections, and uh, they maintain the author list up to date. And uh, when a question arises regarding their content, which happens uh, basically every day, uh, these are the first people I reach out to. This is a screenshot of a dashboard. Uh, we have uh, a, lot, a lot of such uh, dashboards. Here I can administrate the access to our uh, library. I can uh, add new people, I can remove people, I can see details about their activities, I can see a, a list of content they uploaded to, to the portal recently, I can export the lists and so on. This is the second step in our strategy for the content. Uh, we decided to store just something. Uh, by something, I mean the latest versions of documents. Uh, as I've already said, our content is quickly changing, and our users need to have just the latest information. When they are selling products, they are not in, uh, interested in uh, like uh, one-year-old information about the product. They just need the latest information. Uh, in, order to, in order to keep uh, our repository up to date and eliminate all obsolete uh, documents, we implemented a custom expiration workflow, which is really simple. It works this way. Any content uh, which uh, comes to the repository is expired in six months, without exception. But you can decide not to expire it, but uh, you must first review it or update it. People who review content and uh, who get emails about uh, approaching expiration dates are the administrators. Uh, the greatest feature of uh, our workflow is that uh, expired documents are not lost, but they can always be restored. This is the reason why we did not um, implement uh, Alfresco Records Management module where it is impossible to restore the expired content. And uh, uh, you can trust me, it happens uh, uh, all the days because people are, uh, you know, like uh, busy, busy to review their content on time. They didn't read uh, their emails at, and so on. So uh, this is an example of, uh, of another dashboard where uh, people can see all expiring content uh, within their section. They uh, can see how many people downloaded that content, how many people viewed that content. They can uh, choose another expiration date. They can uh, update the document they, or they can expire it. So uh, we started that uh, workflow like two years ago, and we have already archived about, uh, e archived or expired uh, 2,600 uh, documents. And uh, this is the third step, uh, which is actually the the first. Uh, this is the third step, which is actually the first, because it's how everything started. Uh, we realized that uh, people liked the fact that uh, there is a human administrator behind the virtual library uh, who gives that library a human touch. I am someone who helps people out when they need this. I create tickets from all requests coming to us, and I keep them open until someone has solved the request. And I know personally all administrators. I am familiar with our folder structure, and I know perfectly where uh, to find the latest information about the product. Uh, 
in order to make uh, sending requests as simple as possible, uh, we put a feedback button on uh, every page. And uh, I must say th that uh, this proved to be a very efficient strategy to keep people engaged because they are sending us feedbacks on content they preview, uh, informing us about typos in those documents, uh, about missing translations, about outdated content, et cetera. This is uh, an example of a feedback I got recently. People are surprised that, uh, there is, uh, that their requests are taken seriously and uh, that uh, there is a human being behind the virtual library who actually cares to solve their issues. So to sum it up, uh, uh, we have a very simple strategy for internal product information, but uh, that strategy required uh, some technical solutions and a lot of convincing and process changes. Uh, we have responsible uh, people for all content in our repository. We are uh, working with quickly changing content where new updates are coming in every day. So this is the reason why we decided to store just the latest version. And uh, we have a human being behind the library who helps people out when uh, and tries to solve their issues in the shortest delay. Uh, do you have any questions? I, it, it was a little bit short. I <laughs> didn't expect it. Yes, uh, just wait for the microphone. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. I noticed that uh, you didn't use share. Mm -hmm. So you coded your own interface to the Alphasco repository. Mm -hmm. uh, can you give me more detail, uh, APIs, anything like that? Uh, yes, we have our own user interface, uh, uh, which uh, I, 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 will sh I will switch to the slide with the screenshot. Uh, yes, here it is. And uh, it's written in uh, PHP. We use a lot of web scripts uh, to handle our documents uh, which are in uh, Alfresco rep repository. Uh, and but the base is PHP and uh, Smarty, which is a template to generate HTML content. So that's how it works. Uh, and uh, we have also PIVIC, which is a, an analytic tool which uh, helps us uh, to track our users. Our users needs to be, uh, ne uh, need to log in first to access content. Uh, <coughs> we store, uh, yes, uh, and uh, <laughs> it helps us also to, to have a very detailed uh, picture of uh, how our users are using uh, our library. We have really detailed statistics about every move on every page. Uh, we have just internal users uh, because we, the information we store is uh, uh, confidential or uh, uh, can be a really, really a confidential. Uh, we have uh, four level uh, confidentiality and uh, uh, like uh, the lowest level is uh, The lowest, here we have four le levels, and the lowest level is general availability. And uh, I can imagine that uh, in the future that uh, content can uh, be synchronized with uh, cloud. But uh, for the rest of the content, we, we would prefer to use our own user interface, which is accessible only for internal users within our v VPN. Yeah, the last question, um, have you're considering migrating to 4.2. Do you anticipate much difficulty uh, with this user interface uh, uh, being implemented against a 4.2 repository? Do you think so? I don't know. 
<laughs> well, the, the, well the, from our point of view, the, the main issue with uh, 4.2 uh, is that uh, we like uh, guarantee that uh, our URL is uh, like uh, always stable. It means that uh, if you send an announcement about a product, there are links to some documents. And we guarantee that these uh, links remain the same. And we use uh, DBID to, uh, to as a part of that URL. DBID is, uh, DBID is, the, uh, is the unique uh, number which uh, all documents in Alfresco have. And in uh, the 3.4 version, uh, we are like uh, sure that uh, this DBID doesn't change. But uh, when we move to Alfresco 4.2, there it can happen that this DBID change. And this is the reason we, we, we still stick with uh, the 3.4 version. Uh, it's not uh, because of the UI, it's because of uh, the stability of our links, which are sent all around the world. And <laughs> we, we are not really sure who is still using some, uh, some old links. And it actually can happen. For example, I've, I've got just an email from the from the storage BU, uh, BU of our company, and <laughs> they had uh, like uh, two, two year old links. You know, it's like, we are really global company where. And thank you for, all, for your questions. Yeah. Probably was late, so I probably missed the mm -hmm. first slides. What is the business uh, that the, 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 the portal addresses? So what's, what part of the content in, within Red Hat do, we hold, do you hold in the, in the portal? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, the, the, this is a good question. We, uh, we basically have just, uh, you know, the, the documents produced by our uh, product marketing teams and it, uh, the portal should be the, the interface uh, between the product marketing teams and our sales worldwide. Any other question? Yeah. Hi, yeah. Um, it's really interesting uh, to hear you talk about um, the challenges for users of finding authoritative information uh -huh. um, and, 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 and the speed of finding it and so on. Um, you focused on latest information, mm -hmm. storing the newest and you know, sort of filtering away mm -hmm. the older stuff. Do you worry about the issue of um, the small amount of important content versus the long tail of um, less important content um, such that you don't put a lot of effort into maintaining it, storing it and so on? Mm -hmm. Is that a challenge that you have faced? And if you have, I'd be really interested in how you've done that, because I, in the organizations that I work with, um, that's a challenge, mm -hmm. and the approach historically mm -hmm. has been to ask users to tag, label, classify important versus not important, mm -hmm. and that's where it falls out because users are too busy. Yes, exactly. Uh, that, that's an excellent question. Thank you. Uh, We used text to tag important content, but it didn't work uh, for many reasons. Uh, basically, because people are busy and they just, you know, uh, upload content and uh, they really do, do not care anymore. For example, uh, just uh, they have problems just with filling the, uh, the the title of a document. That's already a challenge, you know. And uh, every every week. I, g g I uh, get statistics about uh, all content where the title is missing. And I need to contact uh, all those people to ask them to, to fill in the, the titles. The, the text for important content uh, did not work. And uh, now it's like uh, uh, up to those administrators to decide which content is important from their point of view and to to keep it uh, up to date. It's like 
their uh, it's like their issue it's not my, my my issue it's their issue to have that important content in the portal and to to have it up to date and they uh, when uh, we divide it th that repository those sections are like uh, from uh, 200 documents to like uh, 50 documents and uh, I think they are able to, to know what documents are in their section and uh, what content is important for, th for them. From their point of view, I'm just administrator, I can't decide what content is important or not. It's like, but uh, that's an excellent question, uh, but it's all, it's like, uh, it's more the question to our program management, um, uh, pro program marketing. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, product marketing teams who produced that content to decide what, what is important. So um, I, I think uh, it's, it's interesting that you say it's, it's, it's not uh, the problem of the administrator. Mm -hmm. see the benefits mm -hmm. in their own time frame mm -hmm. for doing that mm -hmm. um, and yeah, for me it's a puzzle that I've struggled with for <laughs> oh a number yes. of years because <laughs> if, if a user can see the benefits of, of being disrupted with some yes. you know, fill in the form or click here then they might do it if they can see the benefits for themselves uh -huh. but often the benefits of correct classification uh -huh. are elsewhere or downstream and that's, that's uh, an interesting puzzle yeah, that, that's a challenge, and uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I'm sorry I can't uh, show you all the tools I, I have, uh, but I, um, as I've said, uh, every week, usually on Friday, I uh, I have something which is called the librarian um, tool, and uh, I, guess, uh, I get uh, really detailed statistics about all wrong metadata we have uh, about everything, and uh, I... Uh, when I see something ro wrong, I uh, send a letter or send a request to uh, to the responsible administrator, asking him or her to fix those metadata because, uh, as you said, uh, they uh, do not see any benefit in filling them correctly, uh, which is uh, of course wrong because we use the, those metadata, for example, for uh, when they are searching for documents. Now uh, we have some active administrators, uh, for example, for uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux content, who are taking their content content really correctly because they they learned the benefit because uh, it's uh, now the text appear in the search in the search bar, and uh, they learned uh, very quickly that uh, it's uh, really used. Another problem was that uh, when I started, uh, our metadata model was very complicated. We had about uh, <laughs> 17 document types and a lot of uh, uh, a lot of aspects. I reduced all those 70 d document types to just one, and uh, I uh, and uh, uh, we uh, based on our uh, statistics, we discovered that only two metadata are important. That people usually look for the type of document, they they look for a data sheet or a white paper, and for the product. So, uh, f from my point of view, only those two fields were important. I, I, I mean the product name, and I mean the document type. So I reduced the the, the amount of uh, properties, and I concentrate on these two. And uh, they, of course, the the results uh, uh, need to use uh, those uh, two uh, two properties. I, I have a question along the lines of the, the metadata. So uh -huh. um, have you thought about using automated rules and actions so that if somebody uploads a document, you actually check that all the metadata is complete, and if it's not, start a workflow and route the document to them so that they have to then get the task to complete the, the metadata? Uh, yes, that's a, that's a good question. And it's uh, the question of the interface we are using. And... Uh, <laughs> Basically, yes. Uh, basically, uh, it's how it works. Because now, when uh, someone, uh, someone, 
uh, when some, uh, someone uploads uh, a content to, to the portal, this content is uh, invisible by default until he fills all metadata. <laughs> but it's like it's not really working uh, uh, correctly because, as I've said, people just upload the content and they f they forget about it. You know, it's like uh, they 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 can see the document that it's uh, grayed out, that uh, it, it has a big tag a big tag saying hidden, <laughs> but it's it's like they, they do not care. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so, so okay, ten minutes. But you are, you, are, you are right, but it's a question of, of the interface, it's the question of uh, all uh, business processes, processes we have uh, and so on. Yeah. Like I, I just wondered whether some of those could be implied by location within the, the, the file plan and, and mm -hmm. that type of thing, where you could sort of have a rule that automatically added some of that. Yes, absolutely, that, that would be great. Got another question here. Uh, not a, a question, more of a contribution on that problem, mm -hmm. uh, because um, I think it's a very good idea to have people closer to the content who mm -hmm. can supervise mm -hmm. what's going on there and review it for you. Mm -hmm. And what I have done is I've provided reports to those people so that they can get listings and get see the overall pattern. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And sometimes what comes out from that, for example, I'm also involved in um, configuring search biasing, mm -hmm. is they start coming to me asking me if there are rules that I could apply to improve so, for example, mm -hmm. we discovered that the end users, they may not be putting in metadata, but maybe they are putting in for a document a subfolder called prior years. So the mm -hmm. current version is at mm -hmm. one folder, and then the older versions, which are still relevant, mm -hmm. there'll be a naming pattern. Mm -hmm. And they feed that back to me as a rule. So I can down bias older material based on that. So mm -hmm. sometimes you can repair mm -hmm. the situation if you have cooperation mm -hmm. with somebody who is uh, understanding of the information. Exactly. The cooperation here is important. Uh. You said that this is an internal application, like in the general availability product information. Is that something you also publish externally? Yes, basically yes. We have uh, any linkage or push from the Yes, we that's an excellent question. <laughs> we thought about uh, a lot about the synchronization uh, and for example about using Alfresco just uh, as a background for for um, other sources of information within the company, for example that uh, general availability uh, documents uh, they appear on our uh, redhead.com site, but they are not linked uh, to our Alfresco rep uh, re repository, unfortunately. We, uh, we have no, the, this is um, uh, a sort of uh, an internal issue. We do not uh, have uh, right now a policy concerning our documents. It's like, uh, it's a little bit chaotic right now. So they're published in a, those same assets are published in some other system. To Yes, to, to some other systems, and uh, our users are not really happy with that situation. They would prefer just one repository. And uh, as I've said, that's one of our challenges because we are still facing a lot of competition from other uh, from other DMS uh, within our company. I remember two years ago, everybody was speaking about uh, Salesforce.com. A year ago, everybody was speaking with in our company about the latest version of Jive. Now we, we will have uh, some other gadget. <laughs> People usually think uh, that uh, the new technology will solve all their issues. After a year, they discovered that <laughs> it doesn't work at all. They have still uh, that mess they had before in their documentation and that uh, they are still using our old portal. And uh, uh, that, that's uh, an excellent question. We, we, ha we really have several uh, several repositories where you need to put your documents, and uh, it's uh, um, certainly not the way to, to follow. <laughs> we have a sim similar challenge. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> so, any other question? So, th thank you a lot for coming here.